the Los Angeles Chargers are the most underachieving team in the NFL. Baltimore at Los Angeles Chargers. Do you think that the Chargers are the most underachieving team in the NFL? Well, you know about my reaction. And my, uh, I, I just, it's almost the point where I'm starting to build like a low key resentment for Telesco's inability to just let it go. Like, dude, and this was so funny. I have no, I have no affiliation to the Chargers. You'd be watching these stints. You would expect that I would have brought the same energy for the Saints coach firing Rand. But no, I'm bringing this energy for the Chargers. Because the difference between the Chargers and every other team is that the Chargers have been in the same fucking position, in my opinion, for the last three years. And I know you're going to tell me, Dobbs, you're full of shit because the Chargers were a team that had an above 500 record and they were in the playoffs and all this shit previous years. But that doesn't matter to me because they still were underachieving. This has been the story of this team literally since Staley took over. The defense, terrible. Offense, super underachieving. It's like, it is the most lackluster combo I can think of. And on top of it, I think I wanted to, I'm going to let you take the floor here for a second. Give me a second here to pull something on the side. I have, okay. I'm just going to list for you in a second every reason that you could not be at the record you're at right now, but they are. So let's, how are they a 4 and 7 team? I'm going to let you finish this and I'm going to go from here. Okay. Yeah. So they definitely are a most underachieving team. I mean, like with what the offense is doing, and having a defensive head coach, like, bro, there's no shot that you should be. You should have this many losses, especially with how much talent you have on defense. But I'll go ahead. I mean, it's like it's not even just the defense. It's it's everything. But yes, yeah, so let's get into it. In a roster where you have Alohi Gilman playing absolutely fantastic this year, Khalil Mack going stupid off the edge, Derwin James, yeah, he's having a little bit of an off year, but it's still Derwin James. It, it no excuses. Asante Samuel, you got again. I'll be clear. The receiving core minus Keenan Allen this year. That's maybe okay. Eckler not, has not been playing right, well. And Eckler has been playing well either. But minus that, Rashawn Slater is your, is your tackle one. And yes, this O-line group, I'm aware, still needs a lot of work. But again, back to this ownership group and Staley and the people that make the decisions, why would that not have been the number one thing you were going for when you have a guy like Justin Herbert behind center? Makes no sense. The way this team has been built, it, they filled out everything besides the most important part of the team, which was the O-line. And it's like, it's just this 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 roster is a malpractice. Whereas it's not about that though, because here's one of my my overarching point is that every charge family would agree. It doesn't matter how much malpractice was built around the uh, development of the O line of this team, because this team is still a team that should have over ten wins. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. It's like this is about as far as you can underperform. They have so many good pieces that any other coaching staff that is under five hundred right now would be killing to have. So it's like when you sit here, and I think on top of it, it's Brandon Staley's just like tantrums that make it even worse trying to like deflect responsibility. Yeah. There's just so many things that are very unlikable about the situation from the outside perspective, I guess. Do you think uh, this is Kellen Moore's team after this year? If Brandon Staley has gone, I think, I think you'll agree with me on this. I think it's very easy to say it is, but I think also I can see that if you give Kellen Moore all that responsibility, it I can also see an alternate reality. Yeah. Where he's overwhelmed and this offense doesn't look as good. And it's almost, just to repeat the whole same fucking thing. Young head coach in over his head. And it's just, you know what I mean? I can very well see that too. I mean, how could you win with Kenneth Murray on defense? That was, yeah. Okay. So that was, <laughs> shout out to Connor real quick. Connor for getting hates his, <laughs> Kenneth Murray. For getting his back in the train. But no, I've been, I've been peeping all year. I know that he's been just one of the most suboptimal linebackers for the last four years. But this year specifically may be the worst because now it's not just him. It, it's highlighted it because it wasn't. You can't really just point your finger, at Kenneth Murray. It's like, oh, everybody and Kenneth Murray still is literally missing every tackle. <laughs> so it's just. I mean, when and I, Eric Kendricks too. Like Eric Kendricks yeah. was to come and be really, really good. And I've seen a lack of effort a lot of times from Eric Kendricks. But again, who's to go back to, Mister Fucking Staley? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of upsetting that you know the last three games, Keenan has thirty five receptions, basically four hundred yards and three touchdowns, and it just is for nothing. It's a joke. 10, 10 points by the Chargers. So let's move over to an actual competent NFL team. The Ravens have a very elite defense and the best record in the NFC or AFC. You know, they're, they're so elite. They have so many good guys. Everyone's really coming into their own on this defense. Like Geno Stone and Kyle Hamilton said, fuck the BS. We're the new best safety duo in the entire league. Come fuck with us. I mean, it's not just them. Justin Matabuke has had, we were talking about last week, has had a huge jump this year. You have a Defe away off the edge. Great year. I know right now, 
especially after last week, a few injury concerns. I think everyone's going to be just fine. Everyone's going to get banged up every once in a while. This defense is still hot defense. This defense is absolutely the best defense in the league right now. Again, you know me. It's week to week. But right now, hottest defense in the league without a doubt. And Lamar's just been on an absolute tear. Even though, again, my thing with numbers, maybe you don't show it as much as you'd think. But when you're watching it, you see how much Lamar, how much control Lamar has over this offense. Oh, yeah. How much you have to pay attention to him on every single snap. Keith then, Mitchell has taken over. Keith Mitchell's hot. What, what were the exact numbers here? 7.1 yards a carry on 64 rushing yards. Two receptions, 25 receiving yards. That's 12.5 yards a catch. I mean, he is he's electric. Why does he not get the ball more? Probably because they have a very electric running back room. And maybe bounce him out for the playoffs. John yeah. Harbaugh thinking some 3D chess. I feel him. But you got to get the ball in his hands more in the future. That's for sure. Say Flowers, two touchdowns. Isaiah likely stepped up. Do you think this is probably the best chance this year out of out of the past years you see the Ravens for them to actually go compete for a Super Bowl? Oh, for sure. Because and that's what I want to talk about is uh, one of the main notes I had is I think Lamar after the game. I loved it. I mean, I was like stuff that I was desperate to see from the Saints from the Saints where I've seen in so long since Drew where it, like just because they won the game was not good enough for Lamar. Like he was saying after the post game, he literally said like, Man, I don't care that we won. Like, we played like shit. Like, what the fuck? Thanks. Yeah. Thankfully, our defense was on one, but this shit can't keep going. And that's the thing is they didn't even have a bad day on offense. So when you have a, a, a subpar day, but you're still willing to, and you still won, but you're still willing to say that and take responsibility, speaks volumes to me about where you want to be and where you should be versus I see some other teams where people have, where they pulled it out, you know, they didn't maybe shouldn't have, and then you're all happy and ecstatic and, and you're feeling yourself. There's a difference. There's a very keen difference between how the Ravens feel and versus how like other teams feel. They kind of pull one out and they, they kind of pat themselves in the back. First, the Ravens are like, no, fuck that. Very much on the same side as the Eagles, where I think that you could say there's like the AFC NFC versions of each other where they're not going to be satisfied until they go win the whole thing. I agree. I'm very confident in the Ravens this year opposed to like how I've been. Like, I've always really liked the Ravens in the past years, but I've always just been like, I don't know if they have that juice to get over the hump. And, and now I feel like they do. And I, you made me remember this is very true. Like Lamar, even on top of it, has had already so many years where they've already been like 11 wins, 12 wins, 13 yeah. wins. He's like, I don't give a fuck about winning the games about in the regular season. He's like, no. I just want to go show everyone that we can do it in the playoffs. He's in a much different mode than everyone else, which is great. I agree. Do you have anything else to say on the Ravens or the Chargers or we can wrap this up? Yeah, I'd say we're ready to wrap it up. Hashtag get Keith Mitchell the ball more, though. Hashtag, Main thing for the Ravens. Well, I... I have Gus Edwards in a lot of leagues. Maybe, right, yeah. maybe give it the Gus split on the it, goal Split line. the carries. Split yeah. the carries.